Ba-da-dee. Ba-da-da-dee. Ba-da-do-do. Ba-da-do-do. Hello, and welcome to Exam Techniques. Oh, yes. <laughs> Something for King's University. And for any other students out there who would like to know about us, this is Exam Techniques. This is a lecture I give pretty much <clears throat> every year in, well, part of a lecture I give every year. There's a, a video already up on revision techniques, and this is exam techniques, and well, we do a series of workshops and lectures every year to help students. And well, as we're doing them remotely this year, I'm putting the lectures broken up into bits onto videos and putting them on the YouTube channel because then it helps my students, helps other students, helps everyone if they want to look at it and find it useful, and uh, more importantly. It means that my students can access it anywhere because as much as I love MS Teams and I realise saying anything against MS Teams will get me into trouble with about three of my employers who are all preaching as the gospel, it does have a habit of losing videos. So, myths. Failing to answer all questions. The fewer questions you answer, the lower your chance of passing, even if you can answer very well. Answer all the questions you are asked to do so. Okay? If it asks you to answer uh, answer parts A, B, and C of a question, answer them. If it answer, asks you to talk, answer four out of five questions, or that says, look, here's a list of ten questions, please, you have to answer or write essays on four of them, then do four of them. Don't do three, and don't do six. Do four. And work out your time appropriately. Answer the question. Do not regurgitate all you know on a topic. In other words, please. I know this happens, and this happens more often than I, I like to think about, especially with students who are very good students. They revise, revise, revise. There is actually a thing called over-revision, which very few people can actually suffer from. So in a nice way, do not use it because you to get out of revision. The odds of you suffering from over-revision are very low. But over-revision can usually be worked out by because a student, when they walk into an exam, instead of answering questions, blurt out every fact and piece of knowledge they have in some kind of written form of vomit all over the page, and it's just everything's there. Do not produce a messy or ineligible script. If you are dysgraphic or dyslexic like me, you should be allowed, I'm with both of those, my sister is dyspraxic, you are allowed able to get a computer if you want to use for your writing exams. I do not know why exams are still handwritten when, frankly, for everyone it would be easier to do them on a computer and it would just standardise for everyone, but they are. Exams are still handwritten, in which case, if you have bad handwriting, go get a desist or work that out how to hand print. I'm lucky, I have been, my dad and my mum both tried to teach me how to print, so I can, if necessary, to instant print my handwriting. But it doesn't work for long, and it hurts my arms like anything, so I don't do that. Um, my form of dyslexia is, a, and I'll explain this because I've run into this, I'm a short-term memory dyslexic, and that part of my brain just doesn't work. I'm genetic dyslexic, but sometimes what they've also termed as. Uh, I have a far more developed long-term memory, which is very useful but a short-term memory, which is very, very small and easily gets overloaded and can't store. So it's like a computer with not enough RAM. And basically it can't store all the information it needs. So my the signals get overloaded going up and down my arms and it ends up shooting pains up and down my arms if I try and write in too long and all that sort of stuff. It's a fun thing to live with, but that's my life. Layout, not everyone has that though, but work it around for you. Try and work it so it is, Le uh, it is legible and it's able to be read and whatever you do, do not use a fountain pen which has a fat nib and all the paint, all the ink goes everywhere and splodgy, it just, no. Um, layout calculations and response in a clear logical order because if you get the sum wrong at the end I can still give you marks for, mar uh, for the working out and if you get the sum right at the end I can only give you marks for the answer, I can't give you marks for working out. So make sure you actually lay everything out in a logical and clear order. Do not bank on a given topic or topics coming up. They may not. They don't always. Do not stay up cramming the night before. Right, get your revision done in an orderly fashion, and then the night before, turn off your phone, go out to the cinema, enjoy yourself, and put it to the back of your head, and go and then go and do the exam next day. Cheating! You will face academic misconduct. 
which is code for you'll be kicked out. Here is the thing. Universities don't have many limits on their powers. The only thing is they have to pick to certain standards in, to, in order to be allowed to, to degree awarding status. That means they are required to uphold standards of academic conduct, and they are required to put in and make you write a literature review or something similar in any dissertation. So you have to prove in this term that you have read around the academic materials available, which is why we have literature reviews to torture students. No, I mean, to show that they've actually done the reading of their topic and actually have read for their degree, which was originally what you were described as doing, reading for your degree. So that's what literature review is all about. Um, or literature or literature survey or whatever you call it in your particular dissertation. And academic conduct. Thou shalt not cheat. Plagiarize, whatever you want to call it. Thou shalt not do it, because that is one of the few things which if a university is found to be allowing people to do on a regular basis, can lose the university its ability to award degrees, which means it loses its ability to have students. More importantly, if it loses its degree awarding status, it probably is going to lose a huge amount of its research income and research funding, which means it's going to be very much poor. So it has to choose between looking after you and giving you a chance, a second chance to do something, or maintaining its status as an ability to earn money. Sorry. Again, the universities might not like me saying that, but that's the truth. Quick tips for a healthy and balanced routine. Only spend up to eight hours per day revising. Maybe let's be realistic to you. But make sure you, if you're going to do less than eight hours a day, make sure you start your revision process earlier so you still get all your revision done. Eat sensibly, drink lots of water, and exercise regularly. Yes, go for a walk with the dogs. Follow a normal sleeping pattern. Try and get actually get some sleep. Don't be an insomniac. It's not good for you. Trust me. Take it from someone who knows. Recognize stress and make sure you can cope with it, which is a terrible line. It is a terrible line. We all recognize when you're stressed is difficult, but you can usually do it. You will have your coping mechanisms. Make sure you have those developed. Make sure you have those developed in a way which is complementary to your revision process. Okay? If computer games are your stress reliever, but you will spend four hours on the computer game and then you won't do your revision. That is not a complementary process of coping with the stress. You need to find something which you can do in 10 to 15 minutes that will take your stress down. Playing with a dog. Going for a walk. Watching some terrible, te trashy television. It doesn't matter, but you have to make sure it's about 15 minutes so you can have it in the middle of revision. Without you getting distracted for hours. If your computer games are your main to major stress relief and you've got things which will tack you through the day, then once the day's over, have someone you trust holding the access to the computer game and have them ask the question, have you done all the revision you need to do today? And if you can say yes, it's fine. Then you get your computer game. Say no, you don't. And if you lie, you're defrauding yourself, not them. Preparations day before. Keep last minute revision focused on key concepts. This is far more difficult to do with things like political science and journalism and a fair number of other topics which which can have publications which actually come out the day before the exam and they can change things. IT is another area where that can happen, where revelations can be made in magazines and suddenly this is all possible. Oh great. Try and keep it to not new concepts, new facts if necessary. Focus on repetition, repetition when revising key concepts. Don't learn new material or topics. <laughs> Within the provider's address set. And double check exam venue and time. Please turn up at the right place. Please turn up at the right place at the right time. And on the right day. Check. Check. Check again. On the day, I suggest leaving early. Um, allowing time for travel delays so you don't get stressed. You don't want to walk in the exam going, I'm late, I'm late, late. all panicked. You don't want to do that. You just go and do that. So make sure you get there nice and early. Um, if there's, a, and also, please don't take this the wrong way, but if there is an invigilator like me on the door, the odds are I'll be sitting there playing with my phone while randomly holding the door open for as long as I can possibly get away with. 
for walking in, and I won't notice anyone who rushes straight past me. But they're not all of us are the same. Toilet, please go before the exams. Again, speaking from experience as an invigilator, the last thing I want to do is have to take you to the loo. To check you don't pl check on your phone or have answers stored in there or all the other stuff. I really don't want to go to the toilet with you. If you have to go, if you have some sort of reason you have to go to the loo, that's fine, I'll do it. But if you can, please go before the exam so I don't have to. <laughs> And I know that's selfish of me to say that, but it just... Mm. Take time to read all the exam questions. Do not rush into answering. Actually read the questions. Make sure you know what they say. Reread exam questions to make sure you have understood what you're expected to do. Be specific in your answers. Don't write everything you know about topic in, uh, about the topic in the hope of getting some points. Address the question properly. Which all pretty much comes back to what I said earlier. Don't vomit uh, vomit words all over the page. Actually think what you're saying. You get more marks for structure and you get more marks for some analysis. Instruction words. Right then. Here's some fun for you. Analyze. Well, that usually means break down the issue into parts, discuss them and show how they interrelate. Assess. Consider the value or importance of the issue, paying attention to positive, negative, and disputable aspects. Another word which sometimes comes up, but is not on this list, because it's this is applicable to what Kingston University usually has in their papers, is argue. Make a case based on appropriate evidence for and against the point of view. It usually will ask you to argue one side of the case. Comment. Analyze or assess the issue. Compare. Look for similarities and differences between the issues. Contrast. Point out differences between the issues. Criticize. Make your judgments about the issues and indicate the criteria on which you base those judgments. It's basically asking for a lot of higher level analysis. Define. Make a statement as to the meaning of the interpretation of the issue, giving enough detail to allow it to distinguish from similar issues. Um, you can also have demonstrate, which is basically like define, but you uh, demonstrate it in terms of you give real life examples. So you're expected to give something which is a real-life case study. Describe. Mention the main aspect of the issue. In, uh, really tell the essential features of a story or spell out the sequence of events in which the issue occurred. Discuss. Analyze the key issues and possible interpretations. Give reasons for and against and draw a conclusion. Evaluate. Similar to assess. Consider your opinion on the issue and show the arguments for and against your position. Examine. Well, that tends not sometimes come into it as well. Uh, present your issue in depth and investigate implications. Explain, far more popular. Describe and analyze the issue and give reasons for the issue. Um, another E word is extent, but usually it's in phrased to what extent, which means explore the case for, sta uh, the case for the stated proposition or explanation, assess and analyze the issues with the uh, without necessarily coming to a conclusion about whether you accept the statement. Um, illustrate, use examples and where possible diagrams, statistics, images, or visual representations. Interpret, clarify, or explain, usually giving your judgment or indicating the issues relate, uh, relate to one another. Justify, provide reasons for your conclusions or for the statement made in the question. List, that's kind of obvious. Outline, indicate the main feature of the issue and organize your answer into a clear structure that shows how they interrelate. Prove, Provide factual evidence and proof that leads to your conclusion. Relate. Explain the connection between the issues mentioned. Review. Provide a summary and assess the important aspects of the issue. Summarize. Well, provide a summary that states the main features of the issue without comment, criticism, or detail of side issues. Now, state I ignored there, but basically state is a, another phrase we use for define to an extent in that it means state what something is. And it means specifically state it. Uh, another phrase which can somewhat come up, sometimes come up is identify, pick out what you consider the key features of an issue. Um, trace, describe and explain how the issue progressed over time. Those are pretty much it. I hope that helps, but you know, basically think about what the words are doing and think about what they're asking you to do. 
in your essay and in your structure. <coughs> manage your time in exams. Okay, manage your time. Look at what the question and is. Uh, look at the questions and set a realistic time frame for uh, for each. Types of questions should have similar time frames by type, not contents. And the example I tend to give is check the exam marks and put it as relation to the time. Okay, so if you've got a three hour exam and it's a 120 mark question, uh, 120 marks a total of the exam, and it's 180 minutes, because it's three hours, not including extra time or anything, let's say just 180 minutes, let's keep it simple. Well, that means that every one mark is worth 90 seconds of your time. So if you've got a 10 mark question, that's a 15 minute exam question. And that's what you have to think. There is usually a relation between the marks for the question and the time you're supposed to give them. It can be difficult some to work out. <laughs> some of my colleagues in the academic world are very, very intricate in terms of their timing they set for exams and the number of marks they give for the question. But roughly that is a good rule of thumb to go with. If in doubt though, larger questions get more time, smaller questions get less time. So if you've got a if you've got a rounding error of a few seconds either way, take it from the small questions, give it to the big questions. Don't spend too much time on any one question. Move on and review if there's time later. Don't leave an exam early. Okay, the only exams I've ever left early were multiple multiple choice ones, which once you've done, you've done. But just the point I will make is again, I have some wonderful colleagues in this world who insist on there has to be a question on the back page on the last page of the exam on the back. And I have known them to leave a blank page and then have the last question on the back, because that's their tradition. So whatever you do, do not get through an exam paper and go, wow, this page is empty. That must be the exam exam, therefore I'm done. Let's flip over and check the back. Just do that for me. Just for me, okay? Just please check the back. And keep checking your answers. It's worthwhile. If you've got the time at exam, go through and check your answers, check they're right. And again, if you've got issues that you want to correct, ruler or straight line edge, you can't use a phone in exam, so it won't be a phone, and single line through, and then write in the margin. Clearly, do not try and write above in little to the script. Do not try and scrub out. If you've got Tipex, use that, but that takes a while to dry, and you might not be able to get a write on it straight away, and that can create an entire mess if you write on Tipex too quickly. So just do it neatly, keep it clean, and keep it able to be seen. Running out of time, use bullet points to explain how you would have answered. We do check them. Answer all questions needed by the paper. Don't focus only on the ones you can do well. Even a shorter answer to a question you struggle with can give you points and will increase your overall performance. Answer all parts of the question. These are important things. You want to get the maximum marks you can do, and you, we can't give you marks of what's in your head. We can only give you marks what's on the paper. This is the problem. This is the biggest frustration of education in this world. I can be sitting in front of a student who I know knows the topic backwards forwards they can have a verbal conversation with me in any day of the week and discuss it but if they don't put that down on paper for some reason in the exam i can't give them marks i can't i can only be because i can't be unfair to everyone else in the group who studied and who has put down the stuff on the exam i have to be fair to everyone and i have to give you marks for what's on the paper that is how i have to do it so please practice. And as I said before, the best form of revision is going through formal exam papers and writing up various systems. There are revision techniques. Uh, revision techniques video goes into that in more detail. And again, if you're a Kingston University student watching this, please note that is the link and it's going to be down below to past exam papers. Go and find them. They're useful. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you found this useful and take care. <coughs>